taxidermy. It's derived from the Greek words taxis, meaning movement, and derma, meaning skin. So loosely translated, it's the movement of skin. That movement is frozen in time. Deer heads in living rooms, a fish on a restaurant wall, or a stuffed bird or wildcat in a school or museum. As hundreds of hobbyists and professionals create stunning, lifelike reproductions of animals for display, you quickly realize taxidermy is an art form thriving throughout Iowa. Roger Hutton has been doing taxidermy for more than 45 years, making 3D trophy memories. As a teenager, he noticed taxidermy articles in his grandfather's Outdoor Life magazines, and one day sent off the $12 needed to order the taxidermy lessons as advertised. His career took off from there. It takes time. It's, it's like anything you do. The more repetition you have, the faster you'll get at it, the better you'll get at it. The basic taxidermy process is to skin the animal, then tan the skin, mount it on a mannequin. That ought to hold it on there. And finish by paying close attention to the detailed features. Get our eye set. So we gotta make sure we get it level. In Iowa, the big thing is deer head. It's our only big game animal, and, and for most people, that's the big trophy, and for most taxidermists, that's your main money maker. Taxidermy's grown into quite an art to where we're actually putting life into animals. It combines creativity with knowledge of anatomy, skills in tanning and carpentry, and artistic talent in sculpting and painting. Learning how to repair mistakes and damages in the wildlife is very important to doing a good quality job. I like to say that it ain't a matter how many mistakes you make, a good taxidermist is able to cover them up and not let anybody know he made any. Not only does Hutton do taxidermy for customers, but he also runs one of three taxidermy schools in Iowa, where students of all ages come to learn how to tan skins and mount animals. On this day, Dave Sunkin visited Roger to help brush up on his duck skills. I thought, you know, I'd look at him and thought I could do that myself. And then I went on an African safari and my taxidermy bill was gonna be really high, so I just started doing my own. I enjoy the outdoors anyway, so bringing the animal back to as much life as you possibly can, that, that's what really appealed to me, and that's why I'm here today, is just to learn how to get more life back into my birds. A lot of times you'll end up spending more time grooming to make him look nice than it actually took you to put him together. And then I'll... <laughs> you'll start getting that color there. Ben Shook, who operates uh, Shook's Tall Tales Taxidermy out of his home near Pleasantville, studied under Roger Hutton. And what I'm using is uh, dry pigment. He says he's constantly learning and trying to improve the quality of his work. I see new things every time I look at a, an animal. I see a different color, I see a different look, I see a different attitude. The more I got into it, the more I felt that it kind of drove me toward my artistic side. Some mounts don't contain any real parts of the animal at all. They are complete recreations, just like this rainbow trout. It's increasingly common with catch and release fishermen and women and certain types of fish. This rainbow trout will take Shook about 20 hours to complete. They know that when they bring it to me, I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna paint 5,000 scales on this fish with an iridescent silver because I want them to have the best fish. According to Hutton, interest in taxidermy is growing, with more and more young people getting involved in the art. That includes his 15-year-old grandson, Remington, who hopes one day to take over the Hutton taxidermy business. I thought it was really cool, and I just decided that I wanted to like, try it and see if I was any good at it. So I started when I was nine. I just keep learning being down here and watching when Grandpa's doing things or if he's mounting something really cool, then I'll come down and watch and like help him and then I'll do my own customer work and he'll help me and just keep getting better and it's like 24 hours school every time I come down here because I always learn something new and improve on something. Ben Shook's kids, nine-year-old Keaton and eight-year-old Cicely, are budding taxidermists as well. They learn by example from their dad and have won awards at the annual Iowa Taxidermist Association competition. 
Well, I like painting a lot, so when I do the reproduction fish, I get to paint them, and that's why I like it. The goal is to produce a mount that is as lifelike as possible. The attention to detail in the fur, feathers, or scales is a labor of love and a point of pride. I don't like calling it a hobby because it's more than a hobby for me. To get a nice piece done and have it look like you imagined it before you even started is, is real rewarding to me. I want them to set it up against somebody else's deer or something else and say, man, that there's something about that deer or that fish. They may not be able to say why, but they'll say that looks better. And I guess that's my goal. 